part. And now. Okay, let me see. We should be live. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Okay, there we go. Oh, it makes you watch an Hello, ad? everybody. Yeah, everything's turned on right now. Oh, it's all okay. set up. Oh, sorry. So, so Eskel, okay, so this is what we look like. Looks good. Do you like the lighting? We could be a little brighter, right? It looks a little dim. What do you think? What do you guys think? <laughs> so Eskel put this whole setup together, and if you will notice in the description box down below, the first thing says, follow Eskel's Patreon, follow Eskel's Go Instagram. Check it out, you guys. Follow Eskel's story. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with me and no, my chat. But then it got all your other descriptions underneath. After it, you so. get bored with reading everything, then you can see my stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amber, do you notice our merch that we're wearing? Oh, did we put Amber's merch in the link? Do you normally have it? We have Amber's YouTube channel in the link down go below. Go check it out. So if you, were in, if you like these shirts, then um, go click the link to Amber's YouTube channel, and she has her merch over there. Sorry, we should have put a link to it directly to this. Eskel, blame Eskel for that. He was in charge. I set it all up today, but um, you can thank me for the good graphics and the mic. Hopefully yes. the mic's doing good. It should is kind of far it? from us, but it's going to look good. Like, graphics and the mic. Oh, oh yeah. It that sounds, sounds really great. good. Yeah. yeah. Hello, you guys. Let me sl switch to live chat so we can see what everyone's saying. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Mary. Hi, Amber. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Sparkly Popsicle. <laughs> Sparkly Popsicle? I like that name. That cool Hi, name. Christy. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Denise. Denise is here. <laughs> Diana. Hello. Hi, Jane. Hi, Marianne. <gasps> Marianne's here! You guys know who Marianne is? She just had a birthday. So Cammie had her birthday on the 17th, and Marianne uh, Barlow had her birthday on the 18th. Ooh, Everybody so tell close. her happy birthday right now. <laughs> Ooh, Denise already donated. She thank did? You, Denise. Oh, thank you, Denise. Money for the coffee fund. Oh, you can see how dirty this is. Esco was driving like a maniac, and it was spilling all over. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I just had like we a... We were running running. late for our live, okay? Yes. I'm David's kidding. here. Hello, cousin. How are you? Elise Gilbert. Hi. Finally made it to a live stream. Yay. Are you on Hi, top Susan. chat or live? I'm on live. Oh, nice. Hi, Amber. Hi, Diana. Hi, Pamela. Happy belated birthday. Yes, everyone say happy birthday to Marianne. Someone's asking if we're going to hear the rest of Gerald's story. Did you guys leave off on something? Oh. um, She's you... done like three videos with him already. Yeah. He has a lot of, of stories. But the next video to be coming out. So we're trying to keep the theme of creepy stories from my cult for this month. So the next story is actually Gerald does talk about, um, well, he goes by Val. He talks about his creepy experience with spirits while he was in the order. So we're going to be talking about that in the next video coming up this week. And then the week after that is a grand finale, and I'm going all out on my makeup for my Halloween look. And we're going to be talking about, should I spoil it? We're going to be talking about Tom Green finally, but it's going to be a long, it's probably going to be like an hour long episode. Cool. So get ready. We only have one more um, Sunday live for this month, for the October season anyway. Yep. So, so I'm I want to do something nice Halloween-y special for next week, but it also depends on who the history is for 47. Um, I'll, Eskel, if you guys are keeping track, his video that he's doing today is number 36. It's his 36 live. So. Oh, yeah. So we're going to talk about my daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our daddy. <laughs> okay. I'll read your guys' comments. Um, oh, Marianne's like, thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you guys for telling her happy birthday. She's the best. Okay. So here, here's what I'm going to do for this episode of uh, Cold Cup of Coffee. Number 46, I have someone that gave me some information on them. I personally have experience with number 46, <laughs> and I, I asked one of number 46 uh, relatives um, to tell me some information that they, if they wanted to have it out and to the public. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this information here. I'm going to go through the information that the relative of number 46 gave me, and then I'm going to tell you my personal experiences with number 46. So first of all, number 46 was Bill Stoddard. We remember Bill Stoddard when we were in the order. Yeah, he was also a teacher, right? Can yeah, he was a seminary that? teacher um, w w as he got older, yeah. But so let me read through this really quick. I hope you guys can hear me. So, Bill was the son of Ren, who is number 37. He's the brother of Dean, who is number 38, and half-brother of number 67. So, we'll be talking about number 67 in the future. Uh, Bill was born Earl Stoddard on 
October 18, 1929, in Blaine County, Montana. When Bill was only a year old, he lost his mother, Mary, to acute pan pancreat pancreatitis. I'm, I'm assuming that's something to do with the pancreas. Hmm. Three years later, his father, Wren, married Clover Colette Erickson on April 24, 1933, and she happily became the mother to Bill and his three siblings. But only three years after that, the family lost Bill's older sister, Dorothy. She died of acute gastritis, which is food fermentation. Dorothy was also born with spina, spina bifida, which was a contributing factor to her death. Bill was only seven years old and coping with both his mother and his sister's deaths. In 1939, Bill par Bill's parents joined the order. So Bill was only 10 by the time he had joined the order. And he recently finished fifth grade. So he's very young when he got affiliated with the order. So he grew up in a pretty loving family, um, having two full siblings and seven half siblings. And at the age of 20, Bill worked as the tram operator at the coal mine. I would say mine. The Wait, coal uh, mine. What age? 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you know Gerald worked there too? The, the last Apparently time. Apparently a lot. Yeah. A lot of people were sent down there. Our, our brothers were sent down there too. Um, mm -hmm. So Bill then served in the army during the Korean War. And I will say this. I always thought that Bill, so I've showed you the military pictures of everyone else. Bill was a handsome young man, okay? And every, it, 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 there's no lie, he was a handsome young man. <laughs> and he you also was it? a... Oh yeah, you can see it pretty good. Mm. Dang it. Just take our word for it, he's pretty good looking. <laughs> Maybe that's a better view. Oh yeah. Sorry, maybe I can leave his, his military picture in the description box down below if you guys want to see how handsome how he was. How old is he in that picture, though? He, when he was in the Korean War. So so hmm. in the Korean War, he was... Let's go back to that note. So... Duh, 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 duh. He joined the army during the Korean War. After serving the country, he married at 25. So that picture was probably in his early 20s. So... Um, 25, he marries his first wife, and she was 18. Two years after his marriage, he moves to Salt Lake and worked as a truck driver. He attempts to live polygamy um, by marrying a Nils uh, Ivan Nilsson's daughter, but that didn't last long, and they never had surviving children together. No, 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 they had one. I believe they had one child together. So he had 11 kids with his first wife and one child with the second one. I don't know fully the whole story on, like, maybe she left him because they couldn't. Like, it was too hard for them to have a, a surviving child. They only had one, so then she left to try to have kids with someone else. I'm not 100% sure of the story on that. But technically, he did live polygamy for a little while of his life. So, so he... Only a little while. Yeah, because she, the second wife left. Oh. So Bill spent his life a devoted order member who worked exclusively for order businesses. Bill was also ordained by the state of Utah as a marriage officiant. He actually is the one who married Cammie to her husband when she got married in the order. He, he like, performed the ceremony. So Bill and Louise had 11 children, so that's the first wife. They had 11 children together. He had one children with the second wife. And... Um, he also acted as a school principal for Enzyme. So I remember when he was the principal for Enzyme. We all loved that. Mm -hmm. Then when they changed things to have it be Paul Kingston's brother, that's when everything went downhill. <laughs> but we liked him being the principal. Um, so as Bill got older, his health started to deteriorate and he lost his leg just below the knee due to diabetes. So he kept his spirits up, though. He even had uh, the words, I love this work, engraved into the woods mountain on his wheelchair. Bill died on March 24th, 2018 at the age of 88. And this is what, so I don't remember, like, I don't know him, the younger picture of him where he's handsome. I mean, not that he's not handsome as an old man, <laughs> but this is how me and Eskel remember him. I don't know if you can see that was well. what, one of the picture they had on the wall of him, right? Yeah. And this is what he looked like when he was our seminary teacher. And he always had, I feel like he had a sense of humor mm -hmm. too. He, he was, was always very funny guy funny and and nice and uh a lot there's not really anything bad to say about him he always had a very upbeat spirit um so he has bill bill w stoddard is on his uh gravestone i didn't see his number number 46 on there which is interesting but i think this was hmm. on his um what are those called those invitations to the funeral number 46 was on there so now I'm going to read what the family member had sent me about what, what they have to say about him. 
and then I'm going to tell you guys my experience. And if you have any stories you want to bring up about him, then you can. Okay. So this is from someone directly from the family. He always treated everyone like they were his grandkids, even if they weren't related. A bunch of kids grew up with him as their grandpa because they didn't have one because they all died of cancer. <laughs> that comfrey, that darn comfrey. He was head of the church in the public eye because Stoddard's are the only family who didn't have to worry about going to jail for money crimes or sexual abuse or any of that. So Paul had him as head for publicity. And now that he has passed away, his brother, number 67, is in the head, which is his younger brother, yeah. So, someone, another Stoddard is the patriarchy of his family now because Bill had passed away. And apparently this, this head of the patriarchy of, of the family kind of sucks. He married someone who is mentally challenged and has kids with them. I want to say their name, but they're still alive, this person that we're talking about. So the sad thing is when Bill passed away, basically someone else who kind of is not a very good person is in charge of everything that Bill was in charge of and they're not doing a good job of everything. The person is very manipulative and he's the one who made, if you guys remember Fred Kingston, the one that was on um, Escaping Polygamy, uh, he made Fred Kingston sign over all of his money and everything and then wouldn't actually take care of him enough. If you guys watch Escaping Polygamy, mm -hmm. you know who I'm talking about because he actually shows up on that episode, the person I'm talking about right here. The person who's now over all of Bill's responsibilities. And wait, if he was on Escaping Polygamy, can you? Say they, I don't think they say no. his name on Escaping Polygamy. Maybe uh, they do, but I just. Mm. Anyways, now that he's missing, there's a huge hole because none of his kids really exude those characteristic ne characteristics nearly as much as he did. Now that he's gone, now that he's missing, I guess it feels like a missing hole. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was almost like a reverse scapegoat for the order his whole life in that he was an easy example for all the corrupt people to point to and say, why would Bill be here if, if this wasn't the kingdom of God? And I do remember thinking that, like, he is a really good person. Why is he in the order? <laughs> he, it's like he's mm. the odd one out. He shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get out of here. But I guess that's true about, like, Gerald's grandpa. Gerald, he was a pretty good guy, and our too. grandpa. I mean, he, he was wasn't only in the member, order, though. Well, for one year, right? Wasn't he? Well, when he was seen, yeah. <laughs> didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so they, they would be like, why is Bill here if it wasn't the kingdom of God? Um, it sucks because he was actually such a good person and did so much good for others, but now most of his daughters married abusers and toxic people, and his granddaughters are all marrying these really creepy guys who don't take care of them and basically just use them. It's like they saw how nice his, Bill's family was, and then they all, all the really messed up Kingstons took advantage of that and manipulated them all into marrying them at really young ages. Uh, the, his family is still really close, though, and they all care a ton about each other. A lot of the boy cousins really are really mad that the girl cousins are being manipulated and mistreated and lied to. So that's, I mean, that's the story of the order is obviously the Kingstons are going to swoop in and take as many of the girls as they can, right? like the higher up ones, which is really sad. But um, I'm really glad that, I hope that the person that gave me that information is watching, and I hope it did a good job of sharing it, and I appreciate you giving your input on your grandpa's history. Uh, and I also wanna talk about my experience with Brother Bill. We knew him as Brother Bill. So he was our seminary teacher, and so when we were doing Penn Foster in the, uh, the order school, uh, it was before like Vanguard and those schools were uh, invented yet, I guess. So we would have to go to, if you guys remember me talking about Room 10, Room 10 at Enzyme had this little section where we would all do like Penn Foster, which was just a homeschool. And one of Paul's 27 wives would be there to like make sure we did all of our schoolwork. And then there was a time hmm. where we had to go do seminary and Brother Bill was over the seminary. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for the donation. Oh. You're so sweet. But I remember... I think he always knew that I was just messing with him, but I remember one time there was a conversation, like, me and my friends would kind of just be, like, poke at him a little bit, because he was one time doing this meeting where he's like, we need to make sure that all of our incomings and outgoings are in the name of the Lord. Then that means everything you buy should be from an order business. And I remember being like, well, Brother Bill, what if I want to buy a car? There's no car shops here. And he said something about the, the auto shop that they have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and then my friend raises her hand and she's like, well, Brother Bill, where am I going to buy my wedding dress? Since you talk about how marriage is so important, where am I supposed <laughs> to buy my wedding dress? And then he was like, you can go to family stores. And she was like, 
Brother Bill, what if I want to buy a cute wedding dress? <laughs> <laughs> and he would just laugh and be and like shake his head. He never was like, go call your mom or da da da. da. He it didn't seem like he had a mean bone in his body, but he definitely was like a dedicated order member. But um, <sighs> there was another. There's got to be some things though. Be oh, for what about houses? You know, things like that. Uh, you, what are you supposed to, to recycle and buy each other's homes? I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. There's got to be. There's no way 100% of everything. I do they can remember own. asking him if he would ever let, like, if God told his wife to get another husband, what he would do about that. And I remember, I don't remember his exact response, and I wish I could remember because I, I just remember being like that. I don't like that answer. <laughs> hmm. But we always gave him a hard time. Sometimes I feel bad for it, but then I'm also like. He, he never, like, got upset about it. And I think that he was smart enough to realize, yeah, like, these kids, these are normal concerns. Mm -hmm. Like, they want to know. Do you have any memories of him? Yeah, there's one, like, this one stands out to me because they said it so many times. And I don't, I don't know why they were even running this, like, experiment type thing. But for some reason, they were trying to prove a point of, like, saying how the order members are in a certain way. So they purposely left a bunch of trash inside of the, the like hallway of the church and they were like I don't know if they re were recording it but they had somebody like taking notes on what were, were going to happen for some reason and then brother Bill came and walked through and he literally started picking up all this trash that they had purposely put there and he's just picking it all up and the kids just taking notes like okay I guess brother Bill cleaned it all and he goes and takes it to I think his teacher or the one above him or something for whatever it was he's like but brother Bill just cleaned it all I don't know what we're supposed to do now and literally that's like one story that they use for an example like oh just like brother bill is one of the main ones that they turn to and like oh he's such a good example he does all these good things and stuff and he really and was like, yeah like i mean i'm sure that like his his like people that were with him 24 7 could have something that you know if you're with someone 24 7 you might have one negative thing to say about him but from what we well, saw, he, was he was old very... like i do remember a few of his comments because he would joke and stuff and I remember, like, he was old-fashioned in his ways, yes, for he sure. he definitely that's, was. That's why I do think he, he probably got along well with a lot of older members. Yeah. But... I do yeah. remember, I will say this, he was one of the teachers that was like, um, Catholics think that they can... Um, that they can get forgiveness as long as they uh, basically ask for forgiveness before they do the sin. And he was like laughing about how Catholics, because they do like the Hail Marys in the confession booths. Oh, yeah. And that's actually mm -hmm. how I first heard that Catholics even did that. And I was like, I want to go to it just to see what it's <laughs> like. That's weird. Huh. Because the way he talked about other religions was like, puh, 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 puh. <laughs> but of course you're going to do that when you're an order member because you're mm -hmm. the best. The order's the best. Well, and he was so dedicated that he probably really did believe, like, oh, this is the only one. Everything mm -hmm. else isn't doesn't compare or something, you know. Which is always so fascinating to me to see these cult members who were... Because he was brought in from a very young age, and, and you, when you're born there, it's so Wait, fascinating. Was he born in it or no? No, 10 years old when they joined. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. It's always so fascinating to hmm. see how dedicated and loyal they are when they have no other experience. Mm -hmm. They have no other uh, way to know that this is the true church because they've never seen any other churches, so they just take the word for it and mm -hmm. run with it. That always like shocks me because I'm like, I sometimes don't even believe it when someone who has experience is telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm sometimes like, hmm. <laughs> but I guess it's, I don't know. Just like that Mark Twain quote, it's easier to deceive someone or fool someone than to convince them that they have been fooled. Let's well, read. it's a lot of a mind game, too, just like that. If When you're born into it, if you don't even give yourself the option to question it, then really you just fully believe it, you know? You don't think of any other way. And I think right. of that a lot. But some yeah. people don't want to question it, I guess. But mm -hmm. let, me, let me respond to some of these comments. Al Alisa Gilbert says... Dang, so it doesn't matter if they think you're a good person or a bad person, they still will use you for the manipulation. Mm -hmm. In any way possible to make the work, the order look better or make someone look worse for, for speaking up, then they will. Anything to make mm -hmm. them look good. <laughs> Amanda is very entertaining tonight. Is it a nighttime? It's only 5.50 here. Where are you at? <laughs> well, technically, that's evening. Kind of yeah. semi-nighttime. The sun is going down. The view outside looks kind of cool. With all the fall leaves on the trees. Yeah. Denise says, oh, thank you for the donation, Denise. Why are you in Utah and where are your packages? <laughs> I think they're here. If we want to do a live oh, a little yeah. later, we can open uh -huh. them on Patreon. 
Um, because what was happening is Esco was supposed to bring them to me at my house, and then he didn't end up going. And so now I have all of the packages here. Mm -hmm. Why are you in Utah? <laughs> I'm asking what? myself the I same thing. I want her thing. to be here. It's a good thing, okay? <laughs> Esco's like, we need a brainstorm. He's like, we need to go out to eat, and you need to help me with some ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to come up with more content. But I also want to bring back the vine energy, because when we were younger, we made mm -hmm. so many fun, hilarious vines. And I think it'd be cool to do that on YouTube shorts and for TikToks and stuff. Yeah. And with her so far away, we haven't even considered doing them yet. But now we got to brainstorm and come up with some fun ones to do. Uncle cool. Bill was awesome. David, was he your uncle? Yeah. Well, he just said it earlier. I haven't but said his, it. his his dad is our dad's brother, so it must be through his mom. Maybe he said his great uncle or something oh. like that. Hmm. Didn't he? He said something about it earlier. Oh, Julie is from Wisconsin. Wow. Yes, Wisconsin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with me. I was raised Catholic. The the one we say every Mass is mm. the Our Father have been in years, but Masses are similar with different readings. It's always so interesting to hear what religions you guys are in. That's interesting, Susan. Does anyone want to say, do you guys want to all comment, like, what religion you are? <laughs> or if you went to church, Esco went to church today. Mm -hmm. It was good. We had food afterwards. It was nice. <laughs> That's all you remember? <laughs> What? I don't remember it, but uh, food was nice because it was basically a Thanksgiving uh, get-together. Yeah. Diana Celebration. says it's almost 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Okay, yeah, so it is East nighttime Coast, over there. so by New York and everything. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We were talking to someone from New York the other day. And they, and I thought it was so fun, actually, because yeah. they live right by the places we went to go and tour yeah. and everything. It's kind of cool talking That's to someone sweet. about those areas, and mm -hmm. it makes me want to go back there, though. Like, hearing about how... It's so bizarre to think that someone actually lives near Central Park. That someone can actually, that's where they live. Mm -hmm. It's so weird that's to think about That's their backyard, that. their neighborhood. So, so cool. interesting to me. But I guess that's also how I feel about, like, Malibu and, like, some parts of Florida. Like, the people actually live here. <laughs> I guess Barbados, too. I was like, I could never imagine. This is, like, such an oasis of, like, it's so beautiful. Mm. Well, be it's also, up. like... It's so small. It's like yeah. People live on this tiny island. You drive for two seconds and you're on the other side of the island, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. You probably have met everybody on the island by the time you've been there for five years. <laughs> yeah, Literally everyone. So. That's what was oh. interesting about Barbados is there was not... Oh, also, though, about Barbados is kind of, for the most part, everyone's related, too. Cause Cause who they... are you going to meet? That's true. <laughs> Did they talk about that? I w they should all do DNA tests and see, like, everyone's siblings. <laughs> oh, yeah. See how close they all are. Well, of course, there's people that migrate there and people that move, obviously. But, yeah, pretty much, for the most part, everyone knows everyone around there. What yeah. I thought was so interesting, sorry, sorry, we're learning mm -hmm. about something new here because I learned it and I think it was really cool information. Some of them had, like, French accents and, like, Mm -hmm. accents of different countries and i was like how have you been born here in barbados but you have these accents and esco was saying it's because because of that like they um what was the story behind that basically the island was taken over by the french and so they've they made french the dominant language and like french everything then it was taken over by an english uh, uh i think england itself and then they made everything English, you know, and mm -hmm. kind of changed everything. And then it was actually taken back by the French. And then finally, in the end, it was taken by the English. For Which the is so time. interesting because Eskel had to learn some French while he was on that mission because some people were speaking French in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And it's technically broken French. Like yeah. if you speak it in France, they'll get mad at you saying you're doing it wrong. But it's their own dialect and way of speaking French. And a lot of native French people say it's a broken French. Kind of mm -hmm. like they call it like a patois type of language but yeah. it's actually the same language they use in the Dominican Republic which the Dominican Republic is an island that's not very yeah. far Caribbean from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Caroline thank you for the donation she says Amanda remind me to send you pics of my family costume ne next weekend we're going to a Halloween party and dressing as an Amish family I <laughs> <Dad> got <laughs> part yeah. of his costumes from one of his Amish friends oh that's and that's what's cool is you guys like actually know Amish people <clears throat> And I, I am mm. still wanting... Have you guys seen the episode of The Office where um, they go to the Shroot Farms? Uh, Jim and Pam go to... It's funny, I'm like trying not to say names. I'm like, this is on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Jim and Pam go to Shroot Farms, and they it's the B&B, &B, right? And it's like in Amish County. And I literally want to do something like that for a YouTube video. Go to a B&B &B 
It's a public B&B, but it's on, so in, cool. on the Amish lands. Wait, wait, so it's public. Could we film it too then? Make yeah, a whole video? Like, yeah, I feel like there's That'd already so people cool. on YouTube who have done that. As long as you're respectful about it, I think mm -hmm. that it's not... But that would be really cool, Caroline. Send me that. It would even be cool just to meet one that's like friendly and talkative and interview them. Just mm -hmm. ask them about their life, like see if they were born and raised in it. Yeah. And just ask them questions about it. That would it. be so cool. I'm going to, once I have some more money saved up, maybe that's the next thing I'm going to do. How far is it? Would you have to fly? Pennsylvania is one of the big ones that has it. And, and Amber was, was like lived around that area. So maybe okay. she could say, like hmm. give us a tour of Pennsylvania. That would be sweet. Um, Flicker Fate says, how long is church at school? Uh, it, well, if you're LDS, you know, it used to be three hours, and then just this last year it got switched to two hours. Three hours, so that's a two long hours. time, yeah. yeah. that's what everyone always, I think that's why they changed it to two hours, because everyone's like, everyone's three asleep. hours! Everyone's <laughs> asleep by the end. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Uh, she's a born-again Christian. That's what our mom taught us to say. She was like, if anyone asks what your religion is, just say, and she would say it like this, born-again Christian, because I think she thought that born-again was a one word. Born-again? <laughs> born-again <laughs> Christian. Um, Wait. Is th I thought she said that one because our aunt was that, wasn't it? No, I think or it no? was because if we said Mormon, then there was all these questions that lined up with it. So if we said mm -hmm. born again Christian, it's like you join the faith, so you don't know much about it. Oh, I don't think like mom really knew fully. Because <laughs> I thought in the beginning she did tell us to say Mormon until we started running into problems, right? And then she... We yeah, I was like, Mom, they're asking what stake I'm in. They're asking what word I'm in. And she, she didn't know what to say to yeah. that stuff. So she, born again Christian was the thing, the, the go-to. And like, it's like no one in Utah, especially at that time, because it was like 90% Mormon kids. So no one in Utah really knew what that meant. And that was great because I didn't know either. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> Join the club. <laughs> like they're not going to ask questions because they don't even know what to ask. That's funny though, the three hour church thing. How much you want to bet that they were like, had all these people that wanted to join and they're like, we're going to get baptized. And then they're like, church is three hours. And they're like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I'm definitely... dedicated, but not that dedicated. <laughs> I will get baptized in that jumpsuit thingy. I will go to the temples, but I will not go to church for three hours. <laughs> oh, thank you, Caroline. You donated it again. You need to come to Ohio so you can see all the cool Amish Mennonite places near me. We have the USA's largest cu cuckoo clock in Amish country. That's oh, what I really want to meet cool. some some Mennonites and Amish and just. I don't even have to film with them, just interview them to like hear, just get, ask them questions, just to hear like and learn about that culture because it's so it's interesting to me. There's a new YouTuber I've seen called Cults to Con Consciousness. It is really good. Ooh, Emma, should we look at that? Cults to Consciousness. I'm just going to look it up so I can remember it. Is it a oh, YouTube channel? Cults to Consciousness. Okay, I'm going to look into these later. I know this girl. I feel like I've seen some of these videos already. I'm going to watch those. Thank you, Emma. Susan says, wow, three hours would be a very long church mass. Glad they changed it to two hours. Catholic is one hour, and I always thought that was long. You know what's interesting? So with Catholic church, do you go and then do confession afterwards, or do you have to schedule an appointment? Do you have an app? <laughs> like, how does Wait, it work? what? You've never been to a Catholic mass? No. It's They're very welcoming. Anyone can go. And I'll but always the remember this. Confession booth. When do you go to the confession? Oh, I've never been to confession booth, I guess. But I've been uh, to different Catholic um, Sunday services and just their mass and things like that. How did you like the Catholic Church? It was honestly, I liked it a lot, and I'd go and visit them because we like a lot of the island people were um, Catholics, oh, and they would yeah. always invite us to their service because we'd invite them to ours. And so I went oftentimes. But there was one time, and it just you know, there's always going to be different. Um, do they call them bishops as well? Whoever priests? teaches at the priests or whatever. The priest? But there was one in particular that me and my companion was sitting there and he made eye contact with me. And I was just watching him, you know, watching his service. And he's like, we have some new guests here today. And I think this particular person, it was probably the first time he had LDS missionaries vi visiting because he seemed like a new preacher or something. And so he had all of his people come up and like shake me and my companion's hands and like really make us stand out. And then during the um, sacramental part, or where you like take the sacrament and like have the bread and wine, then he looked, he like leaned into his mic and looked, made eye contact with me, and he said, Catholics only, please. And I was like, none of the other ones have ever said that to me, but this particular one said that. And I was like, 
Maybe you just didn't like me. I don't know what it was, but I'll always remember that because I really enjoyed going to them until that point, and I was like, dang. This is in Barbados? That makes it really weird, yeah. Well, oh, this particular one was on St. Lucia, actually. Okay. But. And there, I do feel like it's almost, I don't want to say culty, but a little bit because if you are Catholic, you get your wedding, like, that stuff paid for, right? Like, the mm -hmm. certificate and stuff like that gets paid for. But I think that's unique to the in the islands, though, isn't it? Because in the islands, then... You have to pay to get married, and it's, like, expensive, and a lot of people are poor. So the Catholic Church does this thing where, like, oh, if you're Catholic, we'll do, we'll do it I all for you. I thought it was by, the, like, the government that ran it was, like, the, it, it, if you're Catholic, it gets paid for. In, Am I wrong? In Barbados, yeah. yeah. But, but remember, the government is Catholic in Barbados. Like, they're yeah. all ran that But way. don't you think that sounds a little yeah. bit culty to be like that? I don't know. Yeah. And then if you're if you wanted to be Mormon, you have to like fork out this cash well, just to be Mormon. The, the islands are very they're third world. They even it was only like twenty five years ago that they kicked all religions off of the island and only Catholics were allowed to be oh, there. Oh wow. So that so they're that very means Rihanna's Catholic? Or was at one maybe, point? Maybe I bet she was born into it. Because Rihanna's something. from Barbados. Yeah. Mm hmm She's like I think one of the most famous Bajans that She there is. is the most famous Bajan yeah. for sure. Did you guys hear her? She's supposed to be at the halftime? That's the only reason really? I would be watching is if she's in the halftime. Anyways, Amanda, what is your coffee? It is... Actually, I already... I don't know why I'm looking at it. <laughs> I know what it is. Um, so I usually get... Lately, I've been doing oat milk lattes with, like, a little bit of the toffee nut syrup in it and an extra shot of espresso. It's really good. I And I used to only get iced coffees even in the wintertime, but now I, I don't know what it is. Switching over to, to hot... That's the best in the winter time. You gotta warm yourself up. But I've been doing it even when it was like not um, cold, huh. and I I I know I talk about this a lot. It's so annoying. But when I got I feel like I got COVID like a year ago, and my taste and smell still is like I don't I can't smell anything. I can't and like that tastes better now than the other one. Like my tastes are being weird, <laughs> which is also why I like those Aww. spicy chips because <laughs> I can't taste anything, but I can feel the burn. <laughs> so it makes me feel like I alive. Priests do the mass. Bishop is the above priest. Then the Pope in Rome. You can always go to com communion. Cross your arms, and they will give you a blessing. Wow! Hi, Autumn. Autumn is here. Wow. Most religions are culty when you truly examine them. Karen and the Wu train. I, that's what I feel like. The, when I start to dissect a religion, then I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but I think it's just that like. When you get so many people together that are like so devoted to one thing and um, it starts to, if it ever starts to be to the point where they're not being open-minded, then it's culty. Even if it's not a religion, if it's like a group of people and then they're so this way about one thing that they're not willing to be open-minded to other things, then it can start to be culty. It doesn't and even have to be religion. anything where you're going to be biased, when you're like, oh, we are the exception, we are the one and only then that's when you it's going to make you look like you're looking down on other people, you know? And I feel like that's not good. Yeah. And that's the sad thing is a lot of religions, just like that, we were talking about number 46 today was Bill, and it was so easy for in seminary to, while he's teaching how great this work is, uh, to bash the other works. And that, I feel like, is when you need to reevaluate why you're in the, the religion. Is it because you want to feel like you're better than the rest? Or is it because it's actually benefiting you and everyone around you? And that, mm -hmm. I honestly think if it is a true church, it's not only going to be benefiting the members, it's going to be benefiting society, you know? That's just my opinion. <sighs> we got a lot of comments today. Yeah, we got a lot of people here today. 150 people. What's up, you guys? That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. It's been exciting. Um... Mm -hmm. How long has it been? Can you tell? Yeah, we're we're trying. We're on a little bit of a time crunch. I'm going to be going live after, and then. And I have. I'm supposed to be meeting up with some people, so. But I want to mm -hmm. be in, a part of your live, so. Yeah, but mine's probably not going to be very long, anyways. I don't have a ton to talk about, and talk about my dad a lot already. <laughs> so. Yeah, I have a few um, things I want to add on his episode about dad. Mm -hmm. So. That what that's what the order feels like it's doing. Haha, <laughs> that's what David says. Yeah. Caroline says, at our church, as long as you claim to be saved, you can you can have communion. They even let kids do it. I guess some churches don't. Yeah, I, I feel like there's definitely different um, 
Different rituals with communion, for sure. Christine says, I don't like that the Catholics exclude you during the service if you're not Catholic. I didn't understand as a kid. Oh, is, is it multiple Catholic churches that do that? That's interesting. I didn't know that. Amanda, have you hmm. looked into Dr. Stephen Hassan and Bite model of cults yet? I, I had it in my tabs, and I feel like I watched, like, half of one video, but sometimes, because I talk about cults all the time on my channel, and I'm doing <laughs> culty things all the time, then... I get all culted out, and I still haven't watched Under the Banner of Heaven. And I've had so many people be like, have you watched it yet? We should watch it together. I've been, I watched the trailer to that, and I was like, wow, that looks really yeah. cool. Yeah, I couldn't even uh, finish Keep Sweet, Pray, and Obey. Not that it wasn't a good doc. It was a great documentary. Oh, it yeah. just you got to a out, point man. where I was like, I physically, mentally, am like I'm shutting down. Because it's so close to home and so triggering. And well, I already am triggering myself every day, just little pieces here and there. <laughs> you just got to be able to take yourself out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Too many times when you're too evol in involved in the movie, then yeah, you mm -hmm. get hits too personal. But when you can separate yourself from what's happening in the video and yeah. realize that... And I actually talked to a, a girl who was raised Mormon uh, here in Utah just the other day. And she was like, I can't believe like all of this stuff is going on right under my nose and I never really I don't even know what's going on and then it's like I, I was talking to her about it. I was like well you there's all these talking, there's all this stuff that you can watch you can watch Escape and Polygamy if you want to get more educated on it and then she was like you know what I think it is because I was like I don't get recognized as much in Utah he, and when I ask if people watch Escape and Polygamy in Utah a lot of them say no and they've never heard of it but other mm -hmm. states they recognize me and they know the show they've seen it all and what she and I were coming to the conclusion of, it's a little too close to home for them, the people that were raised in Joseph Smith's teachings, that they don't really want to watch. And she even said that. She's like, I want to be more educated about these things, and I want to not feel like I'm stupid, basically, here in Utah and living here and not knowing what's going on around me. But at the same time, it's almost too triggering and too close to home to watch. And I was like, that's exactly how I feel about, like, keep sweet, pray, and obey, uh, under the banner of heaven and and like mm -hmm. this when you guys are like watch these you know cults and consciousness da, da, da. when i'm in the right headspace i totally can like just eat that stuff up but then sometimes when i'm doing this stuff like i just can't <laughs> i can't do it mm -hmm. but i put it in my my tabs and in my like i'll look, go like the videos and ha make sure that it's on my liked list so that i can go back to them when i'm ready to watch them but i don't know sometimes i feel like like i just like this. I like doing this with you, but I get, do you ever get to a point where you're kind of like, okay, hey, I'm done talking about order stuff. Let's, oh, yeah. let's go pretend that I was not raised in a cold. And I know you, you get into your head a lot too. Whereas I like to put it in the past. And a lot of times when I'm talking about, it, it's like a very distant thing that I barely can remember. Whereas for you, it's like, this just happened yesterday. It seems well, you like, know what's you know? crazy <laughs> is he will, I will have a memory that he was in and I'll be like, yeah, you said this and you, and he's like, really? I don't know. That. And I'm like, that away. <laughs> or he'll mem remember something and I'm like that's not what happened <laughs> because I almost feel like your brain maybe as a man you you put that in a different compartment yeah Where well and me, the way you remember it and like we call it in your head you will oftentimes remember the details slightly differently because every time you bring it back up in your mind it changes slightly mm -hmm. you know there's a little bit that you remember in but a different some way. of these memories I have written in the diary like right after they had mm -hmm. happened so those ones I definitely do trust but it is interesting reading back in my diary and being like wow I, I guess I forgot those really key points mm -hmm. and the more you recall it and and remember it and think about it then the better you will remember those details whereas I feel like you do that a lot more and kind of like think about your past whereas I feel like I've just I only bring it up basically when I'm with you <laughs> or talking about yeah. it specifically but and I do eventually want to have be at a point in my life where it's kind of like <clears throat> oh I only really bring it up when someone asks like oh yeah that, that was mm -hmm. my life but but not anymore, you know? Yeah. And it be I feel like it's a good thing, too, because the reason why I talk about it so rare is a lot of people will ask questions about it, and I'll, like, answer the question, and then I'll be like, and this is where I'm at now, you know? And I'm so excited to talk about my progression, where I'm at, what I'm doing, you know? That it's like, to me, that's way more exciting than talking about my boring little childhood, basically. <laughs> but, but that's the reason why I, I continue to do YouTube and I did this game polygamy and I, I've been continuing is because of... I, maybe I just get this emotional pull. I had it even when I was in the order. The reason, one of the main reasons I left is I couldn't imagine raising children in that environment. And mm -hmm. then to leave and just never look back and never, never do anything about it, knowing, knowing what goes on in there, it feels so wrong. And then to like sleep at night 
Like, I couldn't sleep at night knowing. I but knew what was happening. That's like, to me, sometimes I feel like that's unnecessary torture. Because it's like, that stuff is happening. And I feel like us trying to create a platform and share the message is like as much as we can do. But then t- internalizing that and being like, oh, I need to stop all this. need to control all this. But it's yeah. like, we can't. It's like, they're the ones that are running it. They're the ones that are causing the abuse. We can't take that upon ourselves, you know? I feel like I'm like, I'm like this about it because I do feel like as someone who has left the cult, we have more, um, we have more, uh, responsibility, power. maybe we have more too? power too, because or like, like yeah, let's say ability. some random person over in like Canada that that's never been a part of it. That's trying to start, a something to, mm-hmm. to get things going it's gonna be harder for them than it is for us you know that's what i'm saying true, so true. like i do feel like this sense of um if no one's talking about it let's talk about it mm-hmm. type of thing and, then and also it, it does kind of feel like it's a part of like our calling or, or maybe a part of our purpose in life because like we were given the opportunity to understand enough to leave and mm-hmm. to not only just be brave enough to leave but to leave and have things work out you know to actually be a success and figure out what we wanted to do with that and we have that ability to help others to do the same. I mean, I so wouldn't say like, I, I'm a success at all. <laughs> I'd say I'm a little bit of a failure, but... <laughs> no <laughs> way. I, I am do. so happy with where we've come, come Yeah, to I, and that's what I think. Awesome. I Whenever I get sad about like where I'm at in life, I do think of, you know what, Amanda? If you would have stayed in the order and if you would have just, you know, cowered and married your cousin like they wanted you to be, you know exactly where you would be. So you better remember mm-hmm. that you could have had this life and you you have this life and this life is a lot better than this life that you could have had and we're supposed mm-hmm. to supposed to have, right? Yeah, and I think when you have those negative thoughts, it's because in the order we were constantly like robots, like had to be working, always has had to be doing stuff. So sometimes even though we're doing so well right now, there are times where I get in my head and it's like, oh, I need to do more, I need to do this, I need to do that. Where it's like, yeah, it's great. You want to do as much as you can. You want to be as great as you can. But it's like, we are doing fine. Like, we're doing great. And we need to take a step back and, like, appreciate that and, and acknowledge I do catch myself, to. like what you were saying, like, we can't, we don't have the control. We can't keep acting like we have that control because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, you know, they have to choose to leave. They have to choose to be better. Yep. And I catch myself with, especially when I came out with those informational episodes, I was so stressed to edit those and get those out as fast as possible because I almost felt like, guilty having this information that could be public for them to have mm-hmm. so i was like if you, I, you guys remember when i was like pu- pushing that content out as fast as i can i was even like editing at other people's homes like while i was supposed to be like kind of having a vacation i was like working and i need to remember that at the end of the day it's it's not my responsibility to educate them and stress myself out over it. <laughs> mm-hmm. and i think a big part of it is that we know the value of those things yes. now because like I see people that have, we are able to give them the access to holding out help. And they get so much resources, so much mm-hmm. help. And it's like, we didn't get that when we left. Yeah. Like, that is such a great and thing. I, and it's, oh, it's I awesome. keep thinking about if I was a ch- back, oh, little Amanda, um, when I was researching how to get emancipated and how scary that was, if I had a YouTube video to watch that was someone who came from the order. Especially you know, someone you recognize that yeah. was, went through that experience. How much it's that like, would, oh. help, would have helped me. And mm. so I, I have to remember this too. Like, um, I don't know. I'm like giving myself a therapy session <laughs> <laughs> in front of all of you guys. Sorry. <laughs> I'm overdue to go to therapy. That's for sure. But Mary's making more paintings. That's awesome. I was looking at Mary's paintings the other day. She's so, I, I love your art. Um, Amanda just sold a piece too. She's doing really good. And Jana might be adding another piece on my website. So she sold one piece and she, I was like, if you want to make another one, you can sell it on there. People love your art. People love your guys' art more than mine, apparently. <laughs> what? Your no, art sells I, great I, too. I just feel like my art is very like one thing. But I did have a, there's a coffee shop that wants my art in the coffee shop. So that'll be cool Ooh. to have those hang, hanging up in the, they, they like dedicate um a certain amount of time to one artist and so i'm in line to put my art in that um coffee shop which is cool Ah. because it's like coffee and art it's like two of my favorite things wait where's that at i'll have to tell you okay i'm having a meeting with the manager and because some of the art's going to be some of the money is being donated to holding out hope then i may not even have to because you know when you're putting it in their coffee shop then they get a certain percentage of the sales Mm -hmm. but because i'm a percentage is being donated to holding out hope and they want to help charities they're like all about that then they they might just let me do it for free if they if they like the charity enough i guess that'd be cool uh, if you guys are interested in hearing about that i'll i'll keep you posted on it um 
Sorry, I've been rambling. Let's answer some questions and then we'll have Esco go live. Amanda, I was married in a Catholic church and we pay the priest. It's like a donation. We didn't do things or have a bank, though. At church weekly, they pass around a basket to collect. Oh, yeah. I've been to Christian churches where they do that. And we always <sighs> say the same joke, but maybe we shouldn't get into it. <laughs> yeah. We, we say the joke like, oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> pretend to take the money out We don't out take of the money out, but we pretend. The right? reason why it's so funny, too, is because we went with a bunch of um, ex-order members. It was with my speech. So so at my speech, it apparently is like this local place that, that gives people like a, a, a stage to talk on. So I was doing my speech for this uh, thing. And they, to support this place to, so that they can keep having this community, they passed around a basket for money. And apparently, every person from the order had the same joke. <laughs> you want to say the joke? <laughs> well, it was just being passed down. The fir first uh, ex-order member was all the way on the other side. And they're like, don't mind if I do. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, we're motioning and taking it out just as yeah. a joke. And, and they passed a, it down. Yeah. And then the next person <laughs> So there was a, so, so it was Allison, okay? So Allison's over here, and I think Michelle was there, and then there was an uh, uh, outsider right here, and then me and Eskel. And mm -hmm. the outsider heard them make the joke, and then heard us make the joke, and they're like, you guys have the same personality. And we're like, are we that, like, annoying? <laughs> oh, That's what happens when you grow up. Trash babies. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways... Do you get together with all the ex order members around holidays? Um, we really mm -hmm. usually just do our like sibling thing. So mm -hmm. Cammy, Amanda, Rachel, Eskel. Uh, there mm -hmm. are things where people do put things together. Like anyone that doesn't have a place to go, because it's obviously it's very well known that some people spend Christmas alone when they first leave. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of people who've been out for longer who are like, hey, you can come to my house if you don't have a place to go. Also, holding our help always has really good events and things for us all to go to. So. It's yeah. really nice, especially the Christmas one is huge. I mm -hmm. love going to that. And, yeah, there have been people who just spend it alone, and actually holidays are, like, their most painful time of the year because... And honestly, I think that is for a lot of people, not just people from cults, because I'm sorry to get dark for a little bit, but um, I guess maybe I shouldn't talk about Well, this. the holidays, for some reason, just the stigma of yeah. it. You know, if you're alone on it, and then it's like... Most days I can be alone and be totally fine. But if it just for some reason happens to be the day that society says is a special day mm -hmm. and I'm alone, I'm like, why? Well, it's even like <laughs> Valentine's Day. Any other day you're fine being single, but on Valentine's Day you're like, why me? <laughs> because you see everyone getting all these flowers and chocolates. Uh, and then you just mm -hmm. want to die. <laughs> just kidding. It's because society tells you that you need to have a partner on Valentine's Day. I heard about the Halloween party that I haven't been invited to yet. Haha, <laughs> JK. What Halloween party? Because I haven't been invited to it then. Unless it might be the one that's with Leah. Leah's trying to do a Halloween party. She is? Yeah. I thought it was a Thanksgiving. Maybe I'm confused. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we're both confused. I don't know. Maybe there's someone else, though, trying to do one, too. Christine, it's past 2 a.m. here. It's past 2 a.m. here, and I can't sleep. Going to try to fall asleep listening to the stream. I have to get up for work at 7. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Try some melatonin, but then you probably won't wake up for a while. Mm -hmm. I feel like most places of worship get the cheapest wine possible. Do they actually serve wine? At yeah, the at Catholic um, places. Really? Do, yeah. So they're like, it's like a wine tasting. <laughs> what are the kids? Do the kids drink it? Oh, can I don't know. Can the kids? I would imagine not. But it is such a small amount that I wonder if they just don't care. I guess, maybe. Hmm. I I know in some states, with a parent's consent, the minors can have alcohol. But I think there's an a age limit. What? Even here? Uh, when it's for a religious service, you can have alcohol. Really? Mm-hmm. So if it's in the name of the Lord, you can get wasted. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I bet there's something about the amount, too. It's such yeah. a small amount. That That's interesting. Not a big deal, but... Hi, Ken. Hi, Ruby. You are doing so great, Amanda, uplifting others with your platform. You're so... Aw, thank you, Ruby. Don't forget your value. I know. I need to remind myself. Every, you know how there's some people that do those daily, like, affirmations in the mirror? I need to do those. Because we're our worst critics, and I catch myself all the time being like, <laughs> <laughs> you're the worst. It's like that for everyone. Prison, ex-cult member. Yeah. And that's the thing. Is I think it is. It's hard for... 
that time of year because I don't know. <clears throat> it's such a, a family thing and not everyone does have a family and not everyone has a healthy family. So it is nice that a lot of ex-members are able to make a community for the ones that don't have a place to go. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like that for the FLDS too. There's probably a lot of F ex FLDS and, and sometimes a lot of the times actually they don't even choose to leave. They're shunned. And so here they are getting shunned. Some of them don't even have like a, t a like a fifth grade education and they're just out fighting this life alone. And I'm so glad that there's a places like Holding Out Help that are able to help them with the, these types of issues. Pamela says, it becomes more and more evident what truly good people, oh, she's, I always feel weird when you guys compliment me. <laughs> Do you ever feel weird when they, when there's like, you're so good. Well, it's only especially weird when we have to be the ones reading it. <laughs> but I mean, I love you're it. So it makes sweet, me feel good. Pamela. Thank really you. Nice. I'm several minutes behind now, but not, but no, I am so proud of you both. Oh, thank you, I Pamela. Guess. At least someone's proud of me. Our parents aren't. <laughs> 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 uh, Valentine's Day is for self-love. Spoil yourself. Yes, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And then when, I always say that, and then when the day comes, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I love myself. Eat all the chocolate I want. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm glad you have a place to go for holidays. You have great siblings, too, so you can all hang together. I know. And I know mm -hmm. that I would be way more depressed if I didn't have the three of you <laughs> by my side. Uh, I'm going. I'm glad you have. Okay, I already read that one. Sorry. I'm, like, blind. This this light's kind of bright. <laughs> I look it at doesn't you guys, like, look bright on the screen, though, but. Rochelle says, in other news, Amanda's makeup is on point. Thank you, Ooh. Anastasia and It Cosmetics. What else did I use? That's pretty much it, yeah. The, um, if anyone cares. There's a lot of girls on here, actually. This, this is it Too Faced Concealer? I'll have to show you guys. This concealer is, like, it brightens your eyes. I haven't ha had a lot of sleep since I got here. Actually, that's a lie. You caught me napping when you came over. <laughs> but that was fine. But I was so sleep. tired, so I put extra concealer under here, and I feel like it makes me not look so tired. But thank you, nice. Rochelle. Callie says, I have to stay up late tonight for work, so you should do a Patreon. Ooh, okay, maybe maybe if we have time today, we'll do a Patreon. We'll open the mail. We're still needing oh, to... Oh, yeah, opening yeah. packages for it. Did you That'd open cool. yours? You got yours opened? I don't know. The one from Plug Your Faith? Or which one? Oh, I don't... I guess we'll have to look at them all. Yeah, I, I did open I think there's another one coming one, for you, too. Yeah, there's one new one that I have opened. But yes, I did open Plug Your Faith, and that's where I used his gift card in the cafe at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mel Denise says, yeah, no melatonin with less than five hours to sleep it off. Yeah. Unless you take a teeny tiny dose. And I don't know if you guys watch Headspace at all, but according to Headspace, then um, if you don't have the right um, consistency with melatonin, then it really, it basically doesn't help much at all. You're supposed to be able to consistently be able to take it at, at basically either the same time of day or just the same time in your sleep regimen. For you to for it to be very beneficial, yeah. according to Headspace, I listen to Headspace for like meditation and relaxation, and they have all of these sleep facts and um, uh, like ways to get energy facts and stuff like that. Just different things to like help you throughout your day, and yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, I used to take it every day. This sounds bad, but I did it like when I. Because it hits you like 20 minutes later. Mm -hmm. So I would literally get off work, was when I was married. I would get off work, take the melatonin right before my drive so that I would go right to bed when I would get oh, home. Dang. Especially because I would get in trouble if I woke anyone up. So I would go right to bed when I got home. Wait, because so. he would be sleeping or something? Mm -hmm. oh. It's like, I don't know if you've met people oh, like get really angry when they time. wake up. Well, I would work till... Um, 11 but sometimes i would have extra to do and be there till like two sometimes wow. or i would want to make some overtime money Dang. it's almost been a year though a year since i've worked for someone else a full year how's that feel isn't that awesome it's like it's kind of like oh, some days so jealous <laughs> don't be because it's not easy mm -hmm. but it's i feel like it is so much better than having someone else that you have to like you know yes sir yeah. and i think it's really it really is coming from a cult and having mm -hmm. to be someone underneath someone your whole life mm -hmm. it makes you not ever want to do that again <laughs> even like if that, it's a boss it makes the work way more like satisfying right it's like it you're does. doing all this stuff 
for your goals and like your career and your future rather than just for somebody or someone some company. company. Or, Which I will know? work for someone else if it's something I believe in for sure. But I That's feel like true. a lot of my nine to five jobs where I'm so desperate I need money and mm -hmm. I just go get the first thing that I you know can yeah. get. But um, sorry, I'm like you guys are commenting a lot. Let's see. Uh, uh, did you open mine? I don't know if I opened yours, Sarah. I think that I don't even think I. Did, was there um, one from Sarah? I don't know who they we'll were have to from, do a but Patreon they're, they're all back them. here. We'll just yeah. We'll I'm missing out. Everyone's bugging me at work about me leaving. I've got four days left. Well, probably because they love you. Yeah, that's a good, a good thing if they. Yeah. They love you, Emma. Yeah, isn't that funny though? I saw a comedian talking about how it's just the funniest thing ever. How in our culture you put in a two weeks, where it's like you're basically saying, "Hey, I'm leaving this job," and they're like, "Okay, just stay for two more weeks." It's like, and you're still gonna pay me, even though you know I don't want to be here and I hate it here. I'm gonna be leaving. <laughs> and they're like, and I still yeah, have to two be more here, weeks. dragging my feet for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's like y'all so already funny. know I'm gonna be ruining everything these <laughs> two weeks. I don't. I know that some people like scold me for this for not believing in a two week. I will only do a two week if I actually do respect the company and like them. But mm -hmm. if I'm quitting because you disrespected me or you disrespected a coworker or you were being sexist or you, you I'm quitting on the spot. Especially if it's a huge corporation that it's like they only see you as a number. They're gonna replace you mm -hmm. so fast. They're not gonna actually like consider you or like treat you as a good friend. You're just a worker. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Then, like, then if you're not gonna value yeah. me, why should I value your company? And I know mm -hmm. some people disagree with that, but like my last job I did in Vegas, I, I didn't even give it two weeks, <laughs> and I and I stand by that, <laughs> and I live by that. And if I had kids, I would tell them to do the same thing. <laughs> Don't but. devote yourself to something like a cult mind. It's almost like cult mindset. Like I oh I owe them. I owe them. You don't owe them if they're disrespecting you. If they're in a giving you a hostile work environment. The only way you should do a two week is if you feel like, you know, you want that extra money while you're going to the next place or you maybe you have friends or coworkers that you want to see for two more weeks. Right. But other than that, like, you don't or if them. they are a respectable company, you know, the two yeah. weeks to give them the time to have the next person or whatever, you know, yeah. things like that. There's obviously a reason for it, but a lot of companies just take advantage of it or just, you know, don't do it right. Mm -hmm. and, and also it's like you can teach the company to be better by doing that. <gasps> That's a big donation. Ooh, thank you, Sparkly Popsicle. <laughs> I love that name, Sparkly thank Popsicle. Thank you, Amanda and Esco, for being so fun to watch. Oh, Sometimes I'm like, are we? <laughs> Sometimes I'll look like 183 people are choosing to watch us right now. And we're over here being like, quit your job. <laughs> well, <laughs> not that. I, to me, personally, it's my favorite when I kind of forget that we're on camera and we're just talking about stuff. And yeah. Laughing. Definitely when I first started going live, I'd, I'd be like all sweaty and be like, hey guys. <laughs> so oh man, I get the worst pit sweat stain. <laughs> pit sweat. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys want to hear? What should I say? Tell I me what to tell you. Mm -hmm. It's easy. <laughs> when there's two people because when it's one person it's like you have to constantly be like you know going mm. going going well, well in the beginning now it's a lot easier yeah. but yeah practice makes different. perfect and i do feel like depending on your mood you ever f find that sometimes your mood is is not as upbeat as you want it to be for a yeah live? well what's rough is like so the sunday lives are the only ones that we have to do every sunday you know like all my other videos i can postpone it a day whatever it's no big deal but sundays have to be on sunday so if i wake up and it's just a bad day or like a really bad hair day or just a no energy day it don't matter just, just gotta do it gotta make do it, it work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here's here's one thing i noticed though is that um because i get excited and like have uh, enjoyed doing these even on my bad days once i actually do hit the record then it's like feeling like you guys are here there's like an energy that comes yep. from it and an excitement that comes from it I don't, it's like always makes me feel better i can't even remember a time where i was feeling bad and then i went live and i felt worse no it's always i'm feeling if i'm feeling bad and i go live i feel better because mm -hmm. having your support having seeing how much love and kindness you guys give us it makes us feel so much better <laughs> like happier really? and yeah. feel like and when I even started, like, seeing my live count go up, too, being like, why people actually like me? <laughs> you guys are so nice. It's a huge confidence booster and a type of therapy, really, because mm -hmm. we get to tell our stories, talk about our lives, and so many people, so many of you guys give us feedback. Tell mm -hmm. us about it and, like, just... And we I get to know, hear about your guys' lives. Like, and just like this, Denise, I know who that is. Emma, I know who that... Like, I know you guys. I know mm -hmm. where you're from. And I can say, you know, it's not just like we're sitting here, la, la, la. We get to actually <laughs> feel like we have friendships with you guys. And yeah. it's, 
And it's so cool that you guys can be anywhere. Like, it blows my mind that some of you guys are from the yeah, UK from Canada, or Australia. UK, like, Australia, oh, yeah. So and just cool. like that, we probably, some of us will meet. We This is Amber's uh, merch. I met her. Mm -hmm. And we, it's like, it's kind of cool that you can meet people from all over to be able to, like, be a community together. And to feel like, I remember, I say this a lot, but when I left the order, I felt like no one, I could never resonate with anyone because I came from such a weird cult and I was this weird cult girl. But there's actually a lot of us weirdies out there <laughs> that actually get along and have a lot of similarities. From, and maybe you guys didn't come from a cult, but you have a similar, you know, parents that were maybe a little narcissistic or coming from cult-like backgrounds. That's why I think the unity culture is so good because if you look for it and make an effort to find it, you'll find so much more similarities than differences. And so with the world being so segregated right now and just separating so many things, I feel like it's way more important to find ways that we can all get along and see the common things between us all. Oh, Emma, I'm sad about that. She says they've replaced me already at my work. I'm very disposable. But the exit Dang. interview is Wednesday, and I'm rubbing my hands together so ready to open my mouth. You should record it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everyone's yeah. talking about their favorite drinks at Starbucks. I think, Ooh, Denise, sorry, Starbucks. I saw yours, and, but Esco was talking, and I wanted to, it was, I think it was a caramel a one. Mouth, I'll have to go back and look at it, because I want to see, I want to get, uh, it sounded good. And Melanie's here, that's yummy. Melanie says her favorite is salted caramel frap. Wow. Um, I think this is the Melanie that's our cousin Melanie, right? Which one, Melanie? The one that I used to train at the gym with. Oh, is it that one? I don't know that one. Yes. But one time I mixed that one up with another Melanie before, so. And you were talking to her like it was her? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I really was. Oopsie. Um, I agree, Amanda. I love the community that you've created. Oh, and I really do feel like it's such a loving community, and I'm just, I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. And honestly, like, you guys... Whenever you guys are like, oh, thank you for creating the community, you guys created it. You guys are the ones that told me to do the Patreon. You guys are the ones that told me to do, um, what was the one I was talking about today? We were doing, like, the, the Zoom calls, and you guys you guys have all the good ideas, and I'm just over here like, yeah, that actually, that's a really good idea. We should do that. So, I appreciate you guys <laughs> so much. What? I'm just doing a little post for my life. Oh, he's soon. like, when's my turn? <laughs> Amanda, is it okay if I send you coffee? Um, it is always okay if you send me coffee. You should go it's watch the Patreon, required. though, because <laughs> I know two of the packages that we're going to be opening are co from a coffee company. So. Ooh, mm -hmm. yay. Yeah, I love I love getting coffees from... And Emma sent a coffee, too, from the, the UK. It's always cool getting to try coffees from around the world. One of my favorites is still that Barbados coffee. I really like the Emma's coffee, too. I've been drinking it every time I'm back home. Um, I'm getting some messages. Okay, should we let's let's read a few more comments and then mm -hmm. it's time to go. Us weirdies, yeah. <laughs> Heather, yes, Heather yeah. Weather, we're all just a bunch of weirdies over here. Oh yeah. You know it's better to be uh, not normal. Like I keep, I wasted so much of my life trying to fit in and be like quote unquote normal. There is no normal, and it's better to have an interesting life than a boring normal life. Okay. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I love that you guys are putting out the information you are from coming from where you're from. Thank you, Alexandra. Your favorite is hot chocolate, Mary? <clears throat> Esco loves hot chocolate, too. Oh, yeah. You have formed a beautiful community. You brought us together with your sincerity and openness. Oh, thank you, Diana. I feel like you guys are all so sincere and open, too, and so positive. And real. It's okay to be real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes it's rare, I feel like. Thank you, Callie. No special coffee in Dallas, Texas, so go get something fancy instead. <laughs> Yay! I'm just going to get more Barbados coffee. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That Duppies brand coffee is so good. I wonder if you just looked up Duppies coffee, if it would pull it up. Duppies coffee. Yep. If you look up Duppy's Coffee, it's by Wyndham's Coffee, and they have they make it in Barbados. And the way I found it was we were just in Barbados, and I needed coffee. So I went to a local grocery store there, pulled it off the shelf, made it, and I made just a pot of hot coffee, and I don't usually like that, but that one was the first one I drank, like, the whole pot. And I was like, just this whole was pot. good. It was black coffee. <laughs> 
the whole pot. <laughs> what, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? That's funny. <laughs> but Rochelle, you do drink a lot of coffee. Being normal is vastly overrated. I agree. Kevin says, Amanda, uh, I hope another you like big my donation. Phone. No special yeah. coffee in Dallas. Yeah, that's why I was talking about how I want to buy some more Barbados coffee. Nice. Starbucks got Aww. rid of their Thanksgiving sandwich here in Canada, and I don't think I can ever forgive them. <laughs> Let's Aww. boycott them. <laughs> Just kidding. I know. I went. I went back and forth. Like I really was obsessed with Dutch Brothers for a while, and I I think since but the COVID thing, starting. I'm starting to my taste is being. I don't know. I don't know anyone who is normal. Says Amber. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're the. Maybe you're the abnormal. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. That's a good thing, though. Olivia says, hi. Oh, boy, don't get me started on being real in Utah. <laughs> After this live, I'm going to have a stay up as I won't be working this time no more. I will try my best. Yes, Emma. Yes. Have you ever had Cuban coffee? That stuff is no joke, LOL. Cuban coffee? Um, Haven't you had this one that's, like, called death coffee or death, something? Death wish coffee. Crazy strong. I did the math because I looked up how much caffeine you have to have to have an overdose from caffeine. And <laughs> if you have 14 cups of the death wish coffee, you could die. <laughs> have a caffeine overdose. Dang. 14's a lot, though. But what's but the most you've had in a day, though? Have you ever had, like, up to 10? 10 cups of coffee? I used to have, uh, when I had two jobs, I would get this thing called the... Actually, was it? When I had two jobs? I don't remember. I think it was when I had two jobs. I would get this thing that was at the... It was called a... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it was at my favorite little co local coffee thing that was like a drive through And it was seven shots of espresso. Seven shots. And each shot is at least, what, 50 milligrams of caffeine? Yeah. So seven but is like 300. <laughs> I, I didn't... Um, I didn't drink it all every single time. So... Thank you, Janelle, for the donation. Y'all are like funny and nice friends in my mind. <laughs> raised up raised up Mormon, then I have some strange, relatable stories, too. I'll be joining your Patreon soon. Aw, thank you, Janelle. Nice. I know, I feel like a lot of strict religions have very similar, like, um, uh, traditions. They're very, a lot of them are very old school. And, it's and just because, similar, like, teaching styles, too. Well, you think about it, it's because never is the leadership a young kid. It's always an older person who has the older mindset, who has who wants it to be that way, you know? To an extent, but remember when Paul, wasn't he, like, super young when he became the prophet? I remember people were, like, upset because he was just, like, they considered him a little baby. 20s. <laughs> a little, little kid. Yeah, the story on Paul becoming the prophet is a very interesting one that we should definitely talk about eventually. But, um, all right, let's mm. answer, like, three more questions. And then it's Espo's turn. But don't go nowhere. Yeah, stick around. Come over to my channel. And we're going to be talking about number 36. Caroline says, if you think someone's normal, it means you don't know them well. <laughs> yes, Nancy says normal is boring. Callie says coffee caffeine makes my anxi anxiety crazy, but I always drool looking at the fancy coffees. You can always get decaf if it makes you get, like, shaky. Yeah, seven shots mm -hmm. will make you shake. And I did shake with seven shots, Casey. I can't drink mm -hmm. coffee. I'm sensitive to caffeine. Yeah, I, I would just die if I was sensitive to caffeine. I used to get five shots of coffee in university all the time, but seven, ouch. Mm -hmm. Drink. I drink water. <laughs> I need to drink some water. I have my water waiting over there. I'll grab it when Espo goes live. <laughs> if anyone is a weirdie, it's Paul, LOL. <laughs> what a weirdie. You're not more... You're more beautiful than you know. Oh, I thought you were like, you're not more beautiful than you know. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. You're, you're more beautiful than you know, more talented than you think, and more loved than you can imagine. Oh, thank you, Amy. I need to tell myself that every day. Have you ever had milk tea? Hong Kong style. It's so strong and makes me shake if I drink too much. No, but I'm about to go try it. <laughs> Everyone, hit the like button. I almost forgot. Oh, thank you, Pamela. TPZ 1987. I would love Amanda's reaction to Kopi Luwak coffee. Is this the coffee that's made out of uh, owl poop? Did you know that there's owl poop coffee? <laughs> oh, you recorded me yeah. just at the right time. <laughs> yeah. They oh, yeah. they eat the coffee Ooh. bean and then they poop it out and then they sell Ew. it for like three hundred dollars. And I want to try it. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm crazy, but I want to do it. I drink a diet coke at seven p.m. I'm up until three a.m. I don't know how you guys do all this caffeine. <laughs> Wow, pick of aid. Is Espo going live straight after this one? Yes. Yep. Yes, he is. In fact, I got everything ready, so it'll only take me like two minutes once we end this one. We'll be live. Hopefully. Sometimes I always regret saying these, though, because <laughs> sometimes it takes longer. But 
Can you spill the tea on the Mom Sense podcast? Mm, I almost feel like I'd rather talk about that on Patreon because I don't want to. I don't like ever want to come up. What? Mom okay. Sense podcast is. Oh yeah. Okay. They, they do the podcast together, and it's on um, YouTube, and I don't want to talk Ooh. about it to be like negative, but I feel like there's a lot of things that they gloss over. Hmm. Um, we can talk about it on Patreon. I just don't want to come off as a like I I don't want to be negative towards them. <sighs> But I will call them out for, like, when they were interviewing, um, and you can go back to... Especially if they're, even if they're not fully lying, but, you know, when they're trying to... Well, I um, know them very, very well. the truth. And so I know when they are lying. So let me, let me find the pot, uh, the Culty Cup of Coffee live that I did in reference to their video, and they ended up taking down their video because I talked about Wait, it on my channel. You should go back for a second. Why does, why does it not, I guess, go down? Why does it not have the coffee bean on it? That's weird. Oh, it's. I might it's, have updated it wrong. Hmm. I can fix that. But so it's the live where I'm in Vegas. Here it is. So cold cup of coffee number twenty two with Michelle and my aunt Juliana. We talk about um, one of the episodes of the Mom Ca Mom Sense podcast where they're interviewing the girl who has twenty kids in the order, and I was basically calling them out, and um, then they took it down. But uh, she doesn't like that I talk about her. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> <Obviously>. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just surprised that order members can even have YouTube like channels. Well, just stuff. like that, they can until someone like me starts until calling them out. Happens, uh, yeah, they have to mm -hmm. definitely be, and that's why she's not gonna sit there and be like, "Oh, oh you know, we promote polygamy." Blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. the the interesting thing was, do you guys? Ha. Huh, I don't like talking about it as if it's like, I don't want to be like a drama channel and like talking about other people, but the fact is she is in the order. Both of the girls that like run that podcast are in the order and um, it just, it really rubs me the wrong way when, especially when they made that episode where they're like how to protect your children from predators, which is a, it's a good idea to be like predators online, blah, 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 but so many predators in the order. Like, how come you don't want to talk about that, but you want to talk about these predators that, that probably never even happened to your kids, <laughs> but the ones that are shaking hands with them, you're okay with. So, anyway. I didn't even comment on her video, um, but I saw that she was deleting other people's comments, so I just, like, reposted them to my Instagram story. Because I don't think that's fair. I think that... Um, I mean, obviously, if you're bullying people, like, like I like to let you guys comment however much you want to comment. I've even had, like, order members who bully me on my YouTube. I screenshot the, the bullies, but I don't delete the comments because I feel like it just makes them look like, you know, well, here's the order for you. Mm -hmm. But um, if they're bullying, some, like, if they were bullying Eskel, if they were bullying Allison or Michelle or someone who I who has wanted to share their story and, and brave enough to come on my platform and then have people bully them, I will delete those ones. But I just didn't respect the fact that she was deleting everyone's comments as soon as they were saying anything negative about, you know, the order. Or even saying, just not even negative, just stating the obvious. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I guess I, I'm like, I'm not going to talk about it, and then I did talk about it. <laughs> I just don't want it to come off as, here I am trying to bash her channel, because I think it's a good idea she's trying to do. But when you have a public platform, you have to be okay. You have to be okay with people saying their opinions because that you you're saying yours so you have to be okay mm. with other people saying theirs and that that is the rule number one i feel like did they say something in the order though like along the lines of you basically can't be famous right because i just remember dad always telling me that um because when i was a little girl i was like i want to be a country singer and quickly he was like order members don't do stuff like that yeah like you're gonna basically your fate is you'll be a teacher in the order you will you you'll or do, work at a grocery yeah. store. <laughs> <laughs> you will do something that is going to benefit the order, and how is it going to help the order by going and being a country singer? I was like eight at the time, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just never had that dream again. But uh, yeah, I think that she's probably doing her own thing, and maybe just like that, she had to delete that interview because I talked about it, and maybe she just has certain things that she has to make sure she doesn't say or do. But there's another person who is um, who is in the order and a mom who ha does YouTube videos, but she kind of stopped. It's actually LaDonna's mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and she and was actually doing She was getting well. a lot of views because all hers was, though, I felt like, was about how to handle a bunch of kids, kind of, right? Yeah, but like also she she lied, too. Like, I was, I can't watch those videos because I'm like, bro, 
how about you talk about how your house isn't even in your name it's in the order like they, they were talking about like finances and how to raise all these kids with all the finances that they have and i'm like you are lying <laughs> anyway my point is though i think that they are starting to branch out a little bit and be able to do things like that here and there but i think that they kind of don't realize um how it's portrayed by the outside and then mm -hmm. when people have their opinions of them they don't like it but also, one thing about her channel in particular that got me mad is she was showing off this big old mansion of a house that they bought because they had so many kids, right? And you kind of need that if you're going to raise this many kids right, and that's what her channel is all about. But then it's like there's so many order members that she's supposed to be living consecration with that don't have anything nearly as nice as that, and she's just showing all of this, basically being like, look how great all this is. And the when... reality is, and I'm just going to say what I knew when I was in the order, when you are closer to that to that Kingston leadership and her husband is a son of one of the one of the a son of the sister to Paul. So of course they have more access to to loans and money from the order because they're intertwined. They, and of course they're not going to talk about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um and then there's people in like Daniel's family that have to basically like like Shirley that was living like so trashy because she wasn't one of the favorites. So, and that's the thing is, and that's the reality of it. And it's hard to watch those things because we know the reality of it. Wow. We went on a tangent yeah. with that question. Who asked that question? <laughs> Good question though. Yeah. Mm. Now I, I'm scrolling. Oh, it was Ka Camry Brooke. Can you spill the tea on the mom sense podcast? Well, that's the tea and then some. <laughs> yeah. We thought we were going to wait till Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can talk more about it on Patreon. I just, I try to be respectful of it, but I also like, I'm not going to talk talk them up because I know I know what they're doing and I'm not and I'm going to call them out for it I'm not going to be someone who and, and there's the thing they can call me out they can make a video about me and what they think that I should be doing blah, blah, blah. and they do they don't make videos about it but they do say oh Amanda this Amanda that and they're all saying all they want to say about me but I can't say what I want to say about them <laughs> mm -hmm. and what's funny is if they don't have anything to hide they would have let Amanda talk about it and it would have gotten their video more views and been good for them you know but instead, they take it down because they're hiding something, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, own, own what you're doing and own, own what you say, own what you believe in. And if, if you're upset at people, a lot of people commenting the same thing on your video, maybe think about that. Think about why they're all commenting the same thing instead of delete, 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 delete you know? And you, we can all learn from something from okay, that. Okay, we're going really long I know. <laughs> I know, Esco's like, my turn! Michelle well, I, just, says, I want us to better meet up with people after too. Yeah. I, Michelle says, Mom Sense speaks half the truth. I usually can't trust people who give advice about motherhood when they personally see other children harmed. Yeah. Book of Fate says, They also speak on subjects they have literally no idea about. It's not very high level discourse. And that's the thing. I try really hard not to give advice on things that I don't know. And I really don't like when people give me advice on things that they don't know anything about. So I try my best. To, and I would love it if someone called me out on that because then I could do better. But And, and last thing I'm going to say is something that I've been trying to work on is um, I know that it's a pride thing. And a lot of the times people want to be, they want to be the one that's the smartest one in the room and they want to have all the knowledge. But if you are like that your entire life and everyone else is wrong and you're always right, then guess what that means? You can't learn from anyone else because you're always right. So you can't progress. You're always going to be here because you are your and you you are the obstacle in front of you. That's something that I'm trying to work through and make sure that I'm never doing because I think it's kind of easy for a lot of us to do because we all have pride. That's a note that I want to leave off on. Good evening, Amanda and Eskel. Hope you're having a great day. I hope Laura that you didn't just join because we are closing out. Except <laughs> we're going over to Eskel's channel, so you have it's almost like a part two, like a uh, episode one, episode two. What's let's see. Okay, we're done. <laughs> this was really, really fun. And uh, if you want some more, let's go over to Eskel's channel and... Oh, don't go nowhere, you guys. <laughs> He's like, you stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just awesome. We have like, well, how many people is it? Last I checked, it was like 160. Yeah. Uh, we see. have no, 194. Oh, almost 200 people. Woo! That's so cool. Okay. Heck yeah, yeah, definitely don't go nowhere. <laughs> go on over to Eskel's <laughs> channel. Okay, I love you guys. How do you get out? Okay, I'll end it. I don't know right how to end it because he started it. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, bye guys.